looking at a Nokia fast model, uh, keep it simple, keep it real. Now, this is a video that's um, been difficult for me to actually think about making because I've always had the opinion it's probably not a good idea to open up stuff and actually look at the detail and, and try to expose information. But there's also a lot of lessons and things that I'm learning that, that I kind of I feel needs to be addressed in some way or form. So in this case, there was a, a customer with an inquiry for an external antenna to connect to a Nokia fast mall, um, which is the one that, that gets normally um, provided by Optus. Not in this case, this is this is a unit that the customer actually borrowed me to, to look at. Um, it's still working and it's back with the customer as well. So all good and well. That's why I don't have it here with me today on the, um, on the video. Now, um, there are, of course, online videos. If you look at stuff from the US, people would open up and they would hack away on these devices and actually get you a result going. So that, that's kind of what I'm competing with is against the need to upgrade an antenna. And I got through to a point and I thought I'll put this on the um, on YouTube to actually get my, get my two cents worth in where I think this is heading, um, which I'll discuss at the end. So first things first, I'm, I'm running this slide as you can see here on the screen, um, and that's basically it. So it's the open up version of that antenna. You can see it, it has quite a few antennas that's visible on the um, on the unit itself. And that's that itself is a minefield. And is that minefield worth um, hacking? That's the question I just want to answer. Um, so the first thing is, if you look there, the um, main element that you could see the blaringly obvious one looks to be two dipole elements so two dipole elements in a slant 45 configuration so it's basically you can see there's a cross on there um, and that basically is one element goes in one polarization the ele element goes in the other polarization and we had four of those around and there's two of those so you see as we go through the photo so i'm just going back to the previous one which you can't do that all right now, what this is, this is marked as mock, um, G. I don't know what G means. Let's say it's 5G. I don't know what it means. But it's basically, there's this group of antennas called G, G1 to um, G8, I think it was in, in total. Uh, yes, it was actually, because there's four around them. And then they go into a PC board, and the PC board then splits out two antenna, one and two on top and bottom, um, as you can see on the photo there. So that photo shows you um, the actual unit itself. So this is that's two that you can see there, and then there's two at the back as well, and then two back on the top. And it looks like each of the ports then connects to one dipole on the top and one dipole at the bottom. And it actually seems to be really responsive to um, activity outside the antenna. Now, so there's a poor man's test. Basically, that's what we call it. Um, when you put a hand, hand in front, and I connect this to the um, network analyzer to see if I put my hand in front, does it actually respond and change the readings? That's, that's what we always do, just as a first um, you know, thumb suck rule to see if it doesn't work, nothing happens. If it actually radiates, then your hand's presence will make a difference. So this is what I got. If you look at the video there, um, you know, I just move my hand closer. And as I move, I mean, 20 to 30 seconds, you could see it actually is making a lot of changes on the screen at the back, which is the uh, VNA. and um, When I went from the side of that same antenna, nothing happens, which is a great sign. It means that when I look towards it, it's very responsive to things happening there. And when I go from the side, it's not really doing much, which means it's all focusing forward. That's what you want. Um, now the reading itself, just to show there, that's the, um, the reading on the screen itself. So I had the markers on there. Basically, those little dipoles, they work from about 2.3 gigahertz up. And the, the measurement on the machine is up to four gigahertz. So those dipoles are clearly for the higher frequency bands, um, which is the 5G um, frequency band at the moment that we're using here in Australia. So the 3.5, 3.8 gig frequency band gets well covered by those antennas. That's good. So we know G is 5G. That's good. Um, also, of course, I don't know how it would work inside the unit itself, but obviously it could also cover the um, 2.7 gig and then the, the higher part of the 4G bands. But that is something that would be internal to the device and the software, not sure how that works. So I'm just going to assume for now, um, in terms of this discussion, that's the 5G antenna. So we have two 4G antennas in a Plant 45 configuration around four areas around the antenna, uh, the modem, which is useful information. It creates a problem, but I'll explain what that actually does. Um, now, there's, those are my notes, and these notes are the same notes that I have at the end again. So this is just kind of a precursor to the notes that, 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 that kind of got to my head. So first of all, as I say, antennas marked as G all around are marked 
uh, are clearly the high frequency band. Um, the grain and directivity was awesome. That's the poor man's test that I did. So put your hand against it and from the side, you can see from the front, very responsive. From the sides, nothing, of course. From the other side, nothing happens. So the antennas work phenomenal in the forward direction. It's really, really important to know. Um, there's UFL onto a PC board. One would need to connect an external antenna to the UFL cable and not the PC board. Now, now, this is getting quite um, difficult and this is where the problem of do you want external antennas on there or not is becoming a little like, uh, okay, if you're going to do this, you're really going to be very careful and I don't recommend it. So that's where I am at. I'm not, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a fan at all. This modem is done in a certain way. I think that's the way it needs to be used. That's kind of where I would draw the line. Don't even try, but I just want to see so that I can explain why I say that. Um, so first of all, the PC board is the antenna. So in order to not use the PC board antenna, which has the connectors on, you need to actually have the cable that came out of the um, radio PC board, uh, yeah, the radio circuits on the inside, connect your external antenna to that. So it's going to be a UFL pigtail into the big cable that goes out. Of course, if you wanted to go deep and you actually remove those antennas and go onto the PC board itself, that would be a different case. But you could see it's all kind of sealed. And, and if you go down that path, it's a one-way road. You're not going back. You're not going to undo anything that you've done there. So I am not going to do that, not on mine, not on a customer's unit, unless I have I know, about $1,000 to, to waste and experiment on something. I just don't think it's worth it at all because the antennas, clearly the 5G antennas were awesome. So we're sitting with a good antenna, just need to make sure it gets positioned in the right place rather than trying to spend money on an extra antenna. And when it comes to the 5G side, there's, there's more to the um, problem there. Um, it's internal only. Well, you could see it, that basically um, the doll design is not meant to use extra antennas. That's clear as, clear as daylight just from that first test. Um, how would you use an extra antenna? Well, First of all, I wouldn't. Second of all, I might use a dish. Now, this is a bit of a fun test that I wanted to do last year in summer. I may do next this, this year in summertime as well. I have this big 2.4 meter dish that I bought from somebody who just didn't want to use it anymore for satellite TV. If you put the actual whole modem in the focal point, that's the same effect you would have. So you basically put the modem inside this big dish's focal point. You get you get a phenomenal improvement and it's just going to do everything you want to do. Not practical at all, not something to do, but maybe I would want to do that at a rapid pace. So I'm committing to the uh, membership pool here to say, might just do that. Um, and then of course, use an enclosure. So what I'm thinking there is, the antenna looks so good. Why would you want to put another, ante another antenna with cable losses that going to cause some trouble on the signal to noise to into the mix where you can actually take this thing. If you were brave enough to buy a waterproof enclosure and put the modem outside. It's impractical, probably not a good idea, but that's what you could do is take that antenna that's already there, the whole, whole box, put that outside. Simple idea, stupid idea, but it's possible. Um, now there is a potential problem with using wideband 4G or 5G external antennas. Um, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later in my slides as well, but what I'm trying to say here is you could see the bands are split inside the modem. So you have 5G antennas, there are 4G antennas, which I will show a bit later as well. But what you buy when you use something like, or any, any of the ones that we sell, you have an antenna that does everything in one go. So you have one antenna that you either need to connect to the 4G or to the 5G, but you don't have an antenna that can connect to both. Plus this antenna has antennas, or the modem has antennas in all directions. You need to choose one in one direction and you need to basically confuse the modem by saying, oh, here's one that has different totally different antenna and hoping that the modem and how it communicates with the network will actually work in your favor. They will say, okay, you know, there's something here that's different, but it's good. It's a lot of questions. So you get a 4G antenna or you get a 5G antenna inside the modem. You connect one package that has both. So how are we going to split those? I don't know. It's going to be an interesting puzzle to try and solve if you ever wanted to do this, which is why going for Teltonica would be so much simpler because Teltonica just has external antenna. So you have a modem. I don't have one on me. It just has to plug in. So there's one way. It's the right way. There's nothing you can do that breaks it. Um, okay, what is the direction used by the SDR the system? How to align the modem? Now, because it has a four, four antennas around it, obviously my assumption is that it basically uses one of those arrays for the best signal, maybe uses two to have a little bit of direction finding in between. That's something you can do just as a user. Place it somewhere in your house, maybe close to a window or somewhere where you know there's the window, over there are the towers, and then align it such that the, there is an antenna array that is facing in the right direction. 
that's something you can do without any effort at all and that could help a lot um, and I have some photos a bit later where I could show you where the antennas line relative to the connectors so you could see where is your directions that you may want to say okay let's take this side of my round modem and face that in the direction of a tower that could be the easiest way to do it for any user um, now, okay, feed network and two by two element array. So that's just going into technical talk that the, really what I could see is it's, it's two antennas connected to a feed network and stuff. So I could see what they're doing. It makes perfect sense. That's that's common standard practice. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see. Um, okay, so the other antenna in there was W. Well, we want to see what is W and kind of my gut feel was that's probably Wi-Fi um, and I did the test there as you can see um, I measured it now unfortunately this machine that I used for this test can only go to 4 gigahertz so I couldn't explicitly confirm that 5.8 is also on there but if you look at the frequency band which is on that red marker marker 1 that's 2.3 2.5 it works so my assumption is antenna W is Wi-Fi that is not a pet beef that we have. That's another thing that we talk about when we talk about Teltonica versus consumer products is because the Teltonicas have external Wi-Fi antennas, gives you complete control and opportunity to improve your Wi-Fi. These things, it is what it is. You're going to get what you get and there's nothing you can do about it. So that is a benefit of using Teltonica. And that's certainly something that, that that's a big push for home users to use an industrial grade Teltonica router as well. Um, and then the interesting one, I guess, is antenna L. Now, interesting in terms of that's the alternative to 5G and it's the fallback to 5G. If 5G isn't working, it needs to go back to 4G. That's the way it works. And 5G isn't always available, just currently not the way. And maybe it's always going to be the way that it's going to be 5G with a 4G backup. And that's the way they, they, they do work together. And that's where the problem will be if you connect one to an excellent antenna, the other one is not using an excellent antenna you can create this, this complete imbalance between a super good 5G connection, but when it falls back to 4G, it just says, well, this is confusing the heck out of me. Um, I could see elements running down the line. You can see in the photo there, just down the line, I could see there are antennas that are seem to be antennas and not ground plane. Um, it's just always the same type of structures they use in these types of antennas. It's mixed between a little bit of a dipole, you can see a little bit of a PIFA structure in there. It's all just um, a planar and a basic antenna that always gets used in um, all these small form factor antennas um, and these window mount things. They all have roughly the same idea. So it's nothing, nothing groundbreaking, also nothing incredible. Um, and it's very close to the electronics. So that's one thing that I have against these embedded white band antennas as they're right against metal behind it as well. So it's not going to be overly pretty, but it is what it is and everybody does it. So you're trying to compete and compare with something that's pretty common practice where excellent antennas, of course, have a massive upper hand over that. Um, you see the measurement that I do on a VNA. I didn't talk about the measurement, my apologies. So this is return loss. So I'm looking at the measurement, how much energy I sent into the antenna, what is coming back. Because what's coming back is bad. So I want as little as possible coming back, because if it doesn't come back, it goes out. So return loss minus 10 is VSW of about two to one. So I think it's minus 9.6 um, is the, um, the return loss we're looking for loss should be negative so it's actually there's this contention with us and academics about what do we call uh, return loss but basically i draw the line and if it goes down i would say that antenna is working how good it is that's not for me to say at this point in time because there's a lot of other things at play but you could see that the antenna is functional and this antenna the l's they work across the band so you can see that's the 4g one um just have a call coming in sorry about that um so low band 500, six, uh, sorry, 700 megahertz, and it goes up to uh, beyond Mark 3, so it goes quite high as well. So good, good antennas there. Um, now, what do I do? Um, that's basically my summary. Um, I've learned a lot. I think it's not really a good idea to go for an excellent antenna on these, just because, first of all, you can see the design intent isn't there. Second of all, excellent antennas are for the whole band. But clearly there is a 5G antenna and there is a 4G antenna in the, in the modem and you can't split it with the external antenna. So it's just going to cause more trouble. Get the modem to be positioned and aligned in a way that works really well for you. So here we go. What I said, antennas marked as GR 
higher frequency and performance. Performance because that gain clearly worked awesomely well. Antennas marked as L are white band. I think L is the 4G bands. Um, the different antennas, so you have different antennas in different places. So all in all you have eight 5G connections and you have, I think it was about four 4G connections. Which one do you choose? It's going to be a difficult decision to make, so I'd rather just not even go down that path. There's no single external antenna solution for this. As I said, external antennas are normally 4G, 5G combined. 3G as well, just, just to be clear that, that those bands are there, but 3G gets cut off, so we don't really talk about that too much anymore. Um, the antenna, the design of the modem does not suit external antennas. My point, don't even try to hack. That's my, my final statement here. That, no, don't, just don't do it. That's not worth it. Um, align with one of the panels. That's what I would think, so I would just really position it such as, so, well, there you go, align it with one of the panels. Now, how would you know which way to go? So there's just another slide. So this is a top view. I just put a little sticky note on top. So if you look at it, remember this picture. I can share this as well if anybody wants to see this. Um, the bottom is where the Ethernet ports are. The top is another flat section of the unit itself. But basically, your Ethernet connection is your reference. And you can see it's not quite at 45, but close to 45. Diagonal over it is a panel. So. If you have your flat connections here, then 245 minus 45, that way and that way, that's where they are an antenna, uh, is an antenna aligned. So just try to align it to that, to where you think the tower is, in a window or in the direction of the, your, your property. That probably would be best. If you want to go outside and put it in an enclosure, again, do the same, but make sure that the, the thing is aligned such that you have that direction facing in the direction of a tower. Um, and then the wall, to say, put it in a waterproof enclosure, put it in a dish, fun spoiler, so I think I might just do that experiment, go to Rapid Bay, take that 2.4 meter dish of mine and put this modem inside, because I have one at home, that's how I, so I can do this. Um, put it inside and see if I actually get a sig stronger signal, but it's impractical, not gonna, not gonna happen for, for normal people, just, just, just nerds like me. Um, really, my answer is buy a Teltonica. <laughs> if you wanna use an external antenna, don't try to hack things. Just go for a modem. Uh, yeah, go for a modem and a router that actually just wants to use an excellent antenna. It's going to be clean. It's going to be ready. It's going to be the one that you really want to use. It's not, to me, it's not useful to try and make something work because you think you can. Because it's not always a good idea. In this case, it's not a good idea. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Um, yeah, bye bye. Now, one thing, this is this is the membership portal section of the video that I just wanted to add on top of it at the back, so hopefully you're still watching. Um, question I have to the membership is, do I make this public or just don't even do that? This is a video that just stays confidential. Um, I just want to know yes or no, quick poll. There's um, a few members there. Hopefully some of you watch this. Um, design example, so I'm going to spend more time, I'm going to use the membership portal as a place where I could store these videos, so you don't have to watch them, and it's not that I'm going to just deviate from what I'm doing here, but there's been some design examples with me as a black art technologies engineer that I've been doing, and some stuff I actually want to, want to educate people on. The, this, this thing that I have on my logo, the um, Smith chart, it's a tool that is not well understood and it's something that's really powerful so i'm quite keen to share some ideas and just get 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 that activity going as well um also would like to know if you think similar studies for the membership or for public is is useful happy to have any feedback um we're going to do on the membership portal it's been a bit, bit of a um and a learning curve how to do membership and, and the video itself like this is a pre-recorded one in the morning and I'm going to upload it this afternoon rather than me trying to do a live video which is just the issues are grainy and the preparation is not always ideal um, and I would like to do more membership engagement now that we're getting more members on board I would like to be there for any questions you may have now this is really a thanks for watching thanks for um, letting me have this opportunity to open a modem have a look and get back with feedback to you. I um, hope to see you in the next video soon. Cheers then. Bye-bye.